Hey guys, welcome back. So this video is a dedication to my latest blood test results. So basically that was a quick breakdown of my ketogenic journey thus far over the last 18 months. Now in July I had a full set of bloods taken minus the vitamin C. Um, 25th of October at my most depleted state at the end of the keto cut I had another full set of bloods taken and then on the 30th of October after three days of excessive refeeding I had another set of full bloods taken at that refed state so this will be the breakdown and analysis of those blood test results and um, an update so basically let's start it off we've got the calcium studies Nothing to report there, everything's in the normal range. Um, we've got the magnesium, which I was actually supplementing 500 milligrams per day during the keto cut, and that's come back well within the normal range. Now we've got the renal function, which is your, um, which is your kidneys, and that's urea, creatine, sodium, potassium, chloride, and bicarbonate, and that's all within the normal range at this stage. We've got the thyroid function test. Now that has come back within the normal range. We've also got the liver function test, which uh, everything on the refed state, some of the numbers are a bit higher. At the depleted state, everything was in the normal range. So as far as my doctor's concerned at this stage, it's something to continue to monitor, but definitely not a cause for concern at this point. Now, we've got the vitamin D level. So this was something I was focusing on by eating the sardines and spending more time in the sun. At my most depleted state, it was actually lower than it was in July. So it was 42 in against a reference range of 51 to 150. After the three day refeed, however, it went up to 53. So it's borderline on that low end, but um, it doesn't seem to be causing a problem and there's no cause for concern there at this stage. Now, we've got the testosterone. This is another interesting one. In July, the testosterone was at 28 against a reference range of 8 to 27.9, so extremely high. At the end of the keto cut, it was down to 14.4. So we know in a calorie-restricted state over a long amount of time, it does mess with hormones and it looks like this is potentially what's happened there. So my testosterone is low down there at 14.4. However, the reference range is eight to 27.9. So it's still well within the reference range, it's just a lot lower than it was. Funnily enough, after the three days refeeding, it actually went up to 15.6. So moving forward, I'll get another set of bloods in three months and we'll see what that testosterone rebounds to as I rebound from this diet. Now the next interesting one is vitamin C. Like I said, not eating any plants, um, people are concerned about the vitamin C and it actually did come back low. It was 17 at my most depleted state against a reference range of 26 to 85. And then after the three day refeed, it actually went lower. It went from 17 down to nine. Now, this is interesting because potentially on a keto diet, you don't need as much vitamin C. Um, I mean, let's look at what vitamin C does. It supports cell repair and growth. It's very good for your immune system and it supports skin health and healing. Now, as far as cell growth and repair, I mean, I was the strongest I've ever been. As far as immune system, I've had one cold in the last 18 months. And as far as skin health and healing, now that's interesting. My skin health is very good. However, I have noticed when I cut myself, it does seem to heal a little bit slower. So the recommendation from the doctor on this one is let's start supplementing with vitamin C. Let's go with 1,000 milligrams a day over the next three month period. And then we'll see how that affects the next blood test. So we will start supplementing the vitamin C. Now, the next one is the HbA1c, which is a three-month average of your blood sugar, and that's well within the normal range. 
Now the hematology report, which is just blood overall, um, everything is in the normal range there. There's no cause for concern at this stage. Vitamin B12. Now in July, the vitamin B12 was at 1,014, which is above the reference range of 139 to 651. So at my most depleted, it was 786. And then after the three day refeed, it was 649. So back within that reference range. So nothing to be concerned about there, but something we will keep an eye on because it was relatively high in July. Now, the one that everyone's been waiting for, the total cholesterol. So the total cholesterol is actually at 20.7 millimole, which is about 800 in the American scale, which is four times the recommended limit. Now this is just one number, Let's break it down further. At my most depleted state, the triglycerides were 3.6 and the HDL was 1.4. Now that ratio is not great. However, after the three day, day refeed, the triglycerides dropped to 1.6 and the HDL went up to 2.4, which is a much better ratio. So that's a little bit of the cholesterol picture. Now, we went ahead and got the LDL subfractions as well. So the LDL subfraction breakdown, the small dense LDL are elevated, which potentially says inflammation. Um, being at the end of this keto cut, it doesn't surprise me that they're elevated, but that's another part of this picture. So we've got um, a good HDL to triglyceride ratio. However, we've got a few more small dense LDL particles than we would like. But then I went ahead and got a C-reactive, a high sensitive C-reactive protein test to see how much inflammation there is in the body. And at my most depleted, that came back at 0.2, which is very low. Anything under one is considered low. Then after the three day refeed, it actually went up to 0.42 but still very low. So yes, we have elevated cholesterol, but we've got very low inflammation in the body. Now, I went even one step further because this is what could potentially happen. Yes, I have elevated cholesterol. Potentially, that can cause a buildup of plaques, which can cause heart disease and a heart attack in the future. So I went and had a CT coronary calcium scan to see if there is any hard plaques. Now the results of that show that there's the calcium score has come back at zero. So there's no hard plaques. Zero to 100 is low risk, 100 to 400 is medium risk, and above 400 is high risk. So zero hard plaques, and then no detectable plaque or stenosis in the coronary artery tree. So as far as soft plaques within the artery walls, which can then uh, oxidize and calcify and turn into these hard plaques, there's no sign of any soft plaques. So the bigger picture says, yes, my cholesterol is high. Yes, at this very moment, the small particles were more than we would like and that could potentially be a problem. But at this stage, after 18 months on a keto diet of having very high cholesterol the whole time, I've got no soft plaques and no hard plaques. Now, from what I see with my own testing, the leaner I get, the higher my cholesterol goes. And there is a big theory that says, because I burn fatty acid for energy, my body uses cholesterol as a carrier for fatty acids. So it makes sense. The leaner I get, the higher my cholesterol goes. So at this point, with this coronary CT angiogram and coronary CT calcium score, it's clear that I'm not at any risk. However, it's something that we do need to continue to monitor because potentially those plaques could build up. But at this stage, Moving forward, um, in that next three months, I'll get another full set of blood panels and I really expect the LDL subfraction to stabilize and return to 
the position it was in um, July, where the small dense LDL particles were of a much better ratio. So at this stage, guys, that pretty much breaks down the full analysis of my blood tests. And moving forward, I'll be continuing on this carnivorous keto approach at least for the next three months. I may just relax a little bit and add a few things here and there as I see fit because like I say, I still drink coffee. I still have the occasional alcoholic beverage. I'm still using MCT oil in my bulletproof coffees. So I'm not 100% hardcore carnivore at this stage, but I mean, I'm pretty close to it. But in saying that, this is what I've found works for me through lots of trial and error over the last 18 months. And I mean, the standard keto diet is really good for many people with many health conditions, but it is a big game of trial and error to find what variation of the keto diet really works best for you. And nobody can actually tell you that. You need to figure that out for yourself. So, um... All I can say is just try, try things. Don't be afraid to try things. I mean, the whole keto diet goes against everything you've ever been told. So try cutting out plants. Try this carnivorous approach and see how it goes. If, if anything, what can it hurt? So anyway, guys, that's the end of the video for this one. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, I'll catch you on the next video.